Well, this was the week when the Tory government finally and totally lost control. No, in fact, they lost the plot on illegal immigration. Yesterday, Rishi Sunak was acting all tough in an immigration control stab proof fest, bragging about a 50% increase of raids and doubled arrests. Well, that followed his claim that his Stop the Boats plan had cut crossings by 20%. But anybody with half a brain and the ability to say, Alexa, what's the weather like in Dover, knew it was high winds, not high-minded Tory policies that was keeping the illegals away. That didn't stop Rishi. Part King Canute, part Comical Alley. He reassured us it was he and only he who could stop the tide. Yet it got worse. Today it emerged the Home Office spent a whopping £3.6 billion on asylum support in 2022-23, nearly double the year before. Astonishingly, Rishi has made things worse. His pledge to clear a backlog of nearly 100,000 old asylum claims has created a logjam of new claims. Yes, the lunatics have finally taken over our asylum system. But before you say, oh, well, at least things can't get any worse, the answer is they can. A lot worse if Labour get into power. Because like Rishi, Keir Starmer likes to talk tough on borders. But like Rishi, he'll be another chocolate teapot. Yvette Cooper, his shadow home secretary, is basically Gary Lineker in a wig. And most Labour, share her, most Labour MPs share her refugees' welcome stance too. In February 2020, 53 Bleeding Heart MPs, including Labour luminaires at the time, Jeremy Corbyn, Diane Abbott, David Lammy and Nadia Whittam, succeeded in grounding a flight loaded with 43 foreign criminals about to be deported to Jamaica. Three of those criminals went on to re-offend, including one, Ernesto Elliott, who brutally stabbed a man to death. Yet Miss Whittam called them vulnerable people, adding refugees need protection, not deportation. Whose side are these people on? Some 9,346 have crossed the channel illegally this year, including at least 1,500 this week and over 300 today. We have absolutely no idea who any of these people are. We now no longer know who walks among us. Of course, they're not all bad apples. Some may genuinely be fleeing war zones, but they could have claimed asylum in France. Mind you, you've been to Paris recently? But it's delusional and dangerous for the Linekerites to claim that they're all saints too. In April, security sources leaked to the Daily Mail revealed that there are at least 19 terrorists living at full taxpayers' expense, including Islamic State members who came here in dinghies. But this is likely to be just the tip of the iceberg. Surely it's time to cry, enough is enough. So how can we make Britain safe again? Well, we could declare a national state of emergency to stem the tide of illegals arriving here by a dinghy. In April, Italian Premier Giorgio Maloney did just that. Boats filled with illegals were forced to dock in France. We could enforce existing UN convention laws on national security and tow boats back to France. We could hold a referendum on the membership of the ECHR, new to the human rights lawyers, and deport all terrorists and foreign criminals. We could also even arm the police. But that, my friends, that would take guts. And we just don't have gutsy leaders like Georgia Maloney in Britain. We have spineless Sunak, who shouts at the sea, but cannot stop the tide. And a parliament, public service, judiciary, and a mainstream media stuffed with refugees welcome virtual signalers who are completely out of touch with the public mood. Today, we say it's time to declare a state of emergency. It's time to close our borders to illegals. It's time to make Britain safe again. So tonight I'm asking, how do we make Britain safe again? Should we close the borders? Should we deport all foreign criminals? Should we even arm the police? Well, let me know what you think. Email the usual way, gbviews at gbnews.com or tweet us, of course, at GB